This is Brother Richard. And today, we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokish Mystery. This will be part 363. <clears throat> our lesson uh, we're continuing with is the beginning of Sorrow's Review. We're going to do a review of the basic principles constituting the beginning of sorrows. Scripture indicates a judgment will fall on the human race in the very near future. Jeremiah 25 verse 30. <clears throat> Therefore, prophesy thou against them all these words, and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy habitation. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation, and shall give a shout, as they that tread against all the inhabitants of the earth. So the scripture is telling us that in the very near future, the earth is going to hear the voice of the Lord in anger. Mm -hmm. And in anger he is going to pronounce a judgment upon the whole human race. <clears throat> As a result, scripture indicates through global incitement which is set in motion by the judgment the nations and the peoples of the earth will turn on each other. Verse 32 to 33, Jeremiah 25. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coasts of the earth. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth they shall not be lamented neither gathered nor buried they shall be dung upon the ground so the first result of this judgment that's pronounced against the whole human race is global incitement <coughs> where the human race will turn on itself. Turn to Matthew 24, verse 7. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So this will be the initiating point at which everything will radically change. Which brings us to the next principle. This will be followed <coughs> by the release of the fourth empire kings who will totally obliterate Adamic civilization and divide the earth for themselves. <coughs> Turn to Ezekiel, seventh chapter. Ezekiel 
talking here about what the human race has done to the earth and what the result will be. Ezekiel 7, verse 20 to 21. As for the beauty of his ornament, he said it in majesty. He's talking about YHVH being the basic designer, beautifier of the planet Earth, which Earth was a beautiful world. Let me take a look at it. But they, the human race, made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things there, and therefore have I set it far from them and I will give it into the hands of the strangers those that are not native to the surface world aliens strangers for a prey and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil and they shall pollute it it's going to be given to nine human races the human race uh, that point is going to find itself dominated by intelligences that they never dreamed existed. Let me quickly ask, these intelligences, uh, these nations, for one better term, are they um, indigenous to the inner earth? Yes. Okay. Yes. And what I'm trying to say is they're only indigenous to the inner earth. Or would we see other nations coming from other planets? Really? Well, these beings basically <clears throat> come from the primary creation. Okay. They are incarcerated in the interior of the earth till they're released. Hmm. They have ruled and reigned over the surface at times in the past, during the Luciferian era. So are you talking about the Fourth Empire? Okay. Yes. I thought you were talking about non-human nations. Well, they'll, they'll be in tow. Oh, they're coming okay. in the shadow okay. of these beings. Right. Yeah, the, the giants are going to come back. Sure. The serpents are going to come back. But they're going to be dominated by the Luciferian kings. Right. Do you have a question? Okay. Daniel 7, verse Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. And it shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. What does that mean? It means it's going to section the earth among themselves. Hmm. And each individual is going to rule over a region of the earth. Former earth, they're going to impose their dominion, their kingdom, their rule, over the section in which they dominate. Should we understand that um, the name Shishak, the kingdom of Shishak, is called that from the beginning of Lucifer's mercantile system? Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning, all the yeah. way through, it's yeah. still Shishak. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now turn to Daniel 2, 43 to 44. They stamped, the, well, actually what they're coming against is the uh, Adamic civilization, the Adamic order. They're going to totally obliterate anything <coughs> that smacks of um, <coughs> the human race's culture, its influence. It's reality. They're going to erase it from Reality, and they're going to erase it from the mind of the human race. Mm -hmm. Daniel 2, 43 to 44. I mean, um, yeah, 43 okay. to 44. <clears throat> Where is thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay? They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another even as iron is not mixed with miry clay. 
and in the days of these kings. So the they refers to Luciferian kings who mingle themselves with the generation of the human race, dominate it, totally obliterate human culture, human memory, and then they go on to become the rulers, the Caesareans over the humans through worship as gods, and uh, <coughs> they take dominion over everything. The days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So basically, that's Shishak, the kings that dominate all the earth. <coughs> they bring their kingdoms. So when they set up a dominion over a particular part of the earth, that dominion reflects the kingdom of the king that's establishing that order. And each one will have his own reality. And the human race that's within that reality becomes part of that reality. They will reach a point. They will forget their past. They will forget any independence. They will be totally connected to that reality that they've been basically uh, uh, involved in. But since they are completely connected, they will still know that there are other groups, human groups, who are connected to other kings and having other realities. They or might. They, oh, okay. This they is interesting. might. They might not. So it could be that their whole life is just that tiny sure. thing. Sure. There's nothing outside it. Sure. You, the, they're connected to whatever the Caesarean, whatever the king mm -hmm. is allowing them to comprehend. And he's only going to allow them to comprehend what he wants them to know and the dominion that they basically will owe him through worship. He's, going to, he's not going to be a, um, a liberal ruler. He's going to be a tyrant. Sure. And uh, he's going to demand worship. He's going to demand labor. He's going to demand everything they've got focused on him. Yeah. So the world becomes a tiny place. Sure. In every aspect. Their whole world will just be whatever it is, that region that they're in. Mm -hmm. That's the way it was in the, even on the human scale in the feudal time. Yes. Whatever your liege lord allowed you to have, that, that's what you knew. Anything beyond that, you were totally ignorant of. Well, it's going to be to the nth degree more with these, in, these individuals because they're non-human and they have a greater capacity to inflict a reality on the mind of an individual than any human king could ever do. Brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates the whole Adamic order will be destroyed, but God will preserve some areas of it. Jeremiah 4, verse 23 to 27. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form, and void, and the heavens, and it had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the heavens were fled. I beheld, and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness, and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord, and by His fierce anger. This is Jeremiah 25 verse 30. He speaks in anger, he speaks in rage, he speaks a judgment on all the inhabitants of the earth. <clears throat> For thus saith the Lord, thus hath the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet will I not make a full end. So he's not—he's wiping out 
the human order through the judgment, but he's preserving within that regions. Why? Well, oh, because <laughs> Scripture indicates these areas will be preserved for the prototokist teachers and their students who have the protection of God. Matthew 24, verse 44 to 47. Now, verse 44 gives us the key. Therefore be ye also ready, for at such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. The prime requisite is to be alert, to be prepared to deal when the radical changes take place. If you're not ready, if you're not alert, you're going to go down with the circumstances. Who then, of those that are ready, is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, your eternal calling, to give them meat in due season? That's the total purpose of the prototokist teacher from eternity to the point in which the beginning of sorrows takes place. place to be ready to step into what he has been called to do. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Now this speaks volumes. Verse 46 is so important, I'm going to read it again. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. What does this mean? This means that from the beginning of sorrows, for the desolation, from the onslaught of the fourth empire, from the collapse of human order, human civilization on the earth, this individual has been doing one thing unbroken, feeding God's sheep. The Lord says, when you step in and you continue to do this, well, he's not saying, and you know, I'm going to have to interrupt it here and there because, you know, this is going to collapse on your head or you're going to have to take some evasive action. No, he's saying, who is a faithful servant who is willing to undertake this when this happens, when I come, if I find him still doing it. So he has had an opportunity unbroken to do what he's been called to do faithfully. That means he's going to be protected. Mm -hmm. That means his needs are going to be met. Mm -hmm. That means his main, main prime focus is to do what he's been called to do. The Lord says, I'm preserving certain areas. I'm going to direct the prototokis teacher into that area. That's going to be his shelter. That's going to be where he operates. I'm going to direct people into that area. And he is entrusted with feeding my sheep until I come. Now, Scripture indicates before destruction of the cities, certain numbers will be allowed to escape. Ezekiel 7 Verses 15 to sword is without, the 
the pestilence and the famine within, he that is in the field shall die with the sword. He that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. This is Jeremiah 25. Nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, people being wiped out all over the place, nobody to bury them from one end of the world to the other. In the midst of this, certain individuals are going to be allowed to escape. Because they will repent. Well, when they get where they're going, sure. they're going to be allowed to go through the destruction without being wiped out to get to a place of escape. Notice what it goes on to say here. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning every one for his iniquity. When they get where they're going, they repent. Yes. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. So they, they are going to heartfelt repentance mm. on these mountains. Now, Scripture strongly indicates later these will be betrayed by family and friends who have embraced the Luciferian lifestyle of the fourth empire rulers. Turn to Luke 13 verses 8 to 9. I mean, um, not Luke 13, Mark 13. Mark. Mark 13, 8 to 9. So these become the Matthew 24, verse 9. Yep. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be earthquakes in diverse places. There shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. This is a key point in all the scriptures. Beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows is the result of the judgment that the Lord pronounces on the human race. As a result of this, these have been allowed to escape to the mountains. Verse 9, But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues you shall be beaten, you shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for testimony against them. Brought before rulers and kings. How is that possible? If this is the beginning of sorrows, and all the kingdoms of the earth have collapsed. The Luciferian kings. Luciferian kings, exactly. And you should be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Now, drop down to verses 12 to 13. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, the father the son, the children shall rise up against their parents, shall cause them to be put to death. You shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Now you will note the difference between this group and the faithful servant group. The faithful servant from the beginning is feeding God's sheep undisturbed. This group from the beginning is being hauled off before rulers and kings. Turn to Matthew 24. Starting in verse 7, we're going to read down to verse 9. I mean, down to verse 10. 7 to 10.
For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrow. So they all fall into the same time period. Then shall they, they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. What will happen? The family and friends of those that are on the mountains that have repented are going to be betrayed, not by the Luciferians, but by the humans into the hands of the Luciferians where they will be either pressured into renouncing their, their relationship with Christ or martyrdom. Which brings us to the next principle. <clears throat> Scripture indicates the Luciferian system. What the kings of the earth are going to bring is they're going to establish a global Luciferian mercantile system under Lucifer. This is going to happen before the Harlot City. The Harlot City is going to enter in later on. Before that, you're going to have a global trading system of communities that are linked by the mercantile system. Is that still called Shishak? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Harlot City essentially absorbs it. The Harlot City dominates it. <coughs> right. 70 years later. Yes. Yeah. Mostly seafaring. Well, that's right. later on. Yeah. <coughs> <It's> <coughs> at this point, <coughs> you're, as you would say, is dominated by water. You have these huge islands, continents that are connected by trade. Luciferian kings, sea kings. Note what it says. Scripture indicates the Luciferian system which they will establish renders the human economic order null and void. Back to Ezekiel 7 verse 19. And they shall cast their silver in the streets, and the gold shall be removed. <coughs> the word removed there is corrupted. <coughs> the silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. In other words, they got there because they got their power through their own mercantile system <clears throat> made them rich, made them powerful but when the Luciferian order dominates the Luciferians will look at them in disdain and their gold and their silver will look like you know, paltry uh, monopoly money to the Luciferians and then the humans will realize they don't have a leg to stand on they're totally at the mercy of these beings. They can't buy their way out of this one. Uh, the human dominion is broken. They got no power. They got no influence. They're totally at the mercy of the Luciferians. So what do they do? They scramble to get in the good graces of the Luciferians by taking <clears throat> what they know Luciferians <clears throat> have outlawed Christianity. So any Christians is open field day for Christians. The more you you uncover and you're able to um, make <coughs> uh, um, a uh, casualty at the hands of these Luciferians, the greater standing you're going to have in their view. So they think. So they sell out the father, their mother, their brother, or whatever it is to ingratiate themselves in this Luciferian society. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and, of course, we're going to close one more. Turn to Luke. 
Luke 21. Luke 21, <clears throat> starting with verse 34 to 36. <clears throat> Take heed to yourselves. Take yourself in hand and examine your relationship with the Lord, where you stand at this point. Is there anything that needs to be done in the sight of the Lord to affect His <clears throat> grace toward us. Are we in line with His will and His way? Or is there something we need to do to get there? Is what He's saying here. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. If you're caught up in the peripheral stuff and lose sight of the progression toward the beginning of sorrows. This is a warning. So that day come upon you unawares. What day? The day of judgment. For as a snare shall so come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. The judgment is against all the humans who stand outside of the favor of God. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass all these things A-L-L -L, all these things you're going to have the protection of the Lord upon you no matter what happens in the earth <coughs> till he comes watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. <coughs> <That's> <coughs> some marching orders. That's the profile. That's the instructions of what we need to do. <coughs> and the expectation of what's going to happen in the very near future. Don't get caught unawares. Focusing on the cares of this world. Pursuing stuff. That as soon as this happens... It's going by the boards. Because this reality, this world, <coughs> is going to crash and burn. The only thing that's going to matter is the person's relationship with the Lord. Because we're entering into a totally different reality where this reality has no significance and no meaning to them whatsoever. <coughs> what is important is our place in the reality to come.